kids. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Am I perfectly audible and visible to you all? Do let me know in the chat section. Happy morning, everyone. Hello, good morning, happy morning. So how are you doing? Welcome to the session. Welcome to Unacademy Neat English and I'm your biology educator Ambika Sharma. So today it is the lecture number three on the cell chapter and today we will talk about the plasma membrane. We will discuss the cell wall and even the endomembrane system. So I hope you all are doing very well. So here you guys can see right uh, in the last class I asked you some things and many students they mentioned that in the comment section. So very good, very good, very good, very good Akankya, uh, haan, Akankya Ruthan uh, Mohana, very good, very good. So I asked you the question about the composition of cell membrane of Archae bacteria. So you explained it very well, very good right keep up the good work and do make the notes as well okay do make the notes as well done so today let's start the session and we are going to start with the overview of cell right so in the last class we were talking about the prokaryotic cell we have discussed the prokaryotic cell now you know the basic differences in prokaryotes and even in the eukaryotes so today we are going to start first with the overview of the cell let's have a quick revision of that so do let me know in the chat section guys are you people excited for the class yes everyone are you guys excited for the class and if you are doing homework, you are making the notes, you are revising the things properly, then very good, very good, very good. You are on the right track. Definitely you will crack D2024. And again, if you are doing the same mistakes, you are not studying properly, you are wasting your time, you are just procrastinating the things that, okay, one day I will study, I uh, will study whenever teacher will start the Avengers batch, sorry. Again, you are wasting your time. Right? Again, you people are wasting your time. So it is my advice. Please start the session, start revising properly, right? We will start classes in Avengers Batch from 25th of May. But before that, you have to revise these basics. They are going to help you out in that batch also. And why do waste time? We have, you know, we do not have anything else to do. So why do waste the time? Okay, so now let's start the class. So we will start with the revision of overview of the cell. So just open up your NCRT and start marking everything. So here you guys can see, right? Uh, here it is mentioned clearly that we have observed the cells even in the onion peel or in the human cheek, a very common experiment that we can do in our schools, in our labs, right? Bache? So when you talk about the onion cell, it's a typical plant cell. So if it is a plant cell, definitely it will have the cell wall, right? Right? If it is a plant cell, then definitely in the case of a plant cell, you are going to find out a cell wall. Right? The outer boundary is mainly the cell wall. And when you talk about the cell of the human cheek, so it is an animal cell. So the outer membrane will be the outer membrane will be the plasma membrane. Okay. So cells of human cheek have an outer membrane as the delimiting structure of the cell. So it's the animal cell. So plasma membrane will be there right plasma membrane will be there so you know that both the cells are eukaryotic so each cell is dense membrane bound and it will have the nucleus right it contains the nucleus so nucleus will have chromosomes it is basically the genetic material it is basically the dna clear bache? it is basically the dna right so cells that are having nucleus nuclei that are eukaryotic if nucleus is not there if nucleoid is there then you know it is the prokaryotic so you revised it or not tell me you revised it or not? We have discussed this part in the last class now. So if this overview of cell is for the quick revision. Whatever we have covered so far, we are going to revise it with the help of this NCRT paragraph. So guys, I want to see your responses in the chat section. Do hit the like button, do subscribe our channel and do recommend this channel to your friends, to your juniors as well. Okay, those who are in class 11th, do uh, share this channel link with them also. Okay, ma'am, doubt, what is the difference between the cell wall, cell membrane composition of ARX, that is, you are, are you talking about the archaebacteria? In archaebacteria, it is a little different. Sanjay, we have discussed in, it in the last class and even many students, they mentioned it in the chat section. Okay, so next is cells that have membrane bound nuclei, they are called, ha, huh, we are done with it. So in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes, we will be having the cytoplasm, which is the main arena 
of the cellular activities whatever reactions are going on whatever cellular activity will be there it will be there in the it will be there in the cytoplasm so you can mark this line that it is the main arena of cellular activities in both the plant cell and the animal cell and it is a pyq bachche in the neat examination you will not get any question in biology beyond ncrt everything is given in ncrt but you have to read it properly you should know what to uh, how to make the notes you should know how to revise okay you should know which part you need to focus more so if in this way you will keep revising your ncrt trust me in one year one year is more than sufficient for cracking this exam right you can even target aims delhi afmc like colleges if you will study in a proper way okay done bachche so now here you can see in addition to the nucleus eukaryotic cells are also having other other organelles we are having the endoplasmic reticulum golgi complex is there lysosomes are there mitochondria micro bodies and vacuoles are there but when you talk about the prokaryotic cell you know that they do not have membrane bound organelles they just have ribosome and even ribosome is a non membrane bound organel okay even ribosome is what it is a non membrane bound organel again a uh, important question it's a it's an important question it's a pyq okay bachche it's a pyq so you can see ribosomes are found not only in the cytoplasm they are also present in the organelles like your chloroplast and in mitochondria and on rough endoplasmic reticulum right so this is what you need to mention so when you talk about the eukaryotic cell cytoplasm will be having that ribosome but along with that mitochondria chloroplast and the surface of endoplasmic reticulum will also contain the ribosome and in detail we will discuss this part right in upcoming session we are going to discuss that part okay bachche and more th one more thing that when you talk about the animal cells they have another non membrane bound organelle and that is your centrosome which helps in cell division so this is what you need to mark again a very important line okay so a centrosome is present in the animal cell but it is absent in plant cell centrosome is present in the animal cell but it is absent in plant cell so this is what you people need to mark and here you guys can see the different different uh, cells having different shape having different size so you really need to remember that like mycoplasma is the smallest cell which is only 0.3 micrometer in length and when you talk about the bacteria you can say it could be 3 to 5 micrometer the large isolated single cell is egg of the ostrich okay human rbcs they are 7 micrometer in diameter so all that all these things are important this information is important and you should revise it properly so here you can see the diagram from the ncrt you should mention the things here only so rbcs you know that they are round and biconcave and when you talk about the mammals right when you talk about the mammals so you know that at maturity it will be e nucleated do you remember that bachche at maturity it is without nucleus it is e nucleated and here you can mention the size as well that is 7 micrometer so that is how you can use the ncrt ma'am uh, scientist names are important yes bachche venkat it is important they can ask you the question based on the scientist name as well so here in this part of the ncrt you can mention these points rbcs they are round and biconcave they are round and biconcave and at maturity they are e nucleated the size is 7 micrometer so even you can mention the exception here exception here is when you talk about the mammals exception is camel in the case of camel the rbc is going to be biconvex oval and bachche it will be having the nucleus okay so that type of things you can mention here it is good for the quick revision so here you can see wbcs amoeboid cells having different different you know irregular shapes they have nucleus are having different different lobes here you can see columnar epithelial cell which is tall and cylinder tall and cylinder the nucleus is present at the base and see the nerve cell the longest cell of human body right it is the longest cell of human body it looks like a tree this is how it passes the information and here you can see the plant cell the tracheid right the part of xylem it is the tracheid right bachche which is a, it is a dead cell it is a dead cell and here you have the mesophyll cells round and oval parenchymatal cell so this is how you have to revise so you need to master single single line of ncrt you should know about the diagrams of ncrt you should know about the description of ncrt done bachche done akilesh we will discuss that too okay so today what are we going to start we are going to start the eukaryotic cell and in the eukaryotic cell obviously there will be a true nucleus this is what we have discussed so far 
okay there will be a true nucleus okay so i mentioned it in the last class bachche that protista plants animals and fungi all are eukaryotic when you talk about the five kingdoms monera protista fungi planty animalia so it is the right living monera all other kingdoms are having eukaryotic cell okay living monera all other kingdoms are having eukaryotic cell so everyone just mention this in the chat section quickly just mention it in the chat section quickly living right living monera all the other kingdoms are having eukaryotic cell this is what you people can see protista plants animals and fungi just mention it in the chat section right now it is important okay so in the eukaryotic cell bachche there will be the compartmentalization if you talk about any of the eukaryotic cell it is having its nucleus it is having its membrane bound membrane bound organelles which are going to perform different different functions isn't it it is having the membrane bound organelles which are going to perform different different functions and plus when you consider any eukaryotic cell let's say this is the nucleus again membrane is there let's say this is the mitochondria again membrane is there right bachche endoplasmic reticulum is there so again membrane is there so these membranes what are they doing they are doing compartmentalization of cytoplasm through the presence of membrane bound organelles so what is the meaning of the statement the statement is see whatever organelles we have here leaving ribosome and centrosome in animal cell you can see they will be having the membrane so they are having the membrane so obviously in the cytoplasm they are present so that membrane is doing that compartmentalization it is forming some compartments some spaces in the cytoplasm itself okay it is creating some spaces in the cytoplasm itself so this is what you people need to remember right this is what you people need to remember so eukaryotic cells they are even having complex locomotory and cytoskeletal structures right we will talk about microtubules microfilaments intermediate filaments are there the genetic material is there in the chromosome right bachche right bachche so here the most important point is that when you talk about the eukaryotic cell even they are not identical even they are not same if you talk about the protista not all the protista are having cell wall i'll quote one example here if you remember do you remember the example of euglena bachche do you remember the example of euglena the spindle organism so if you talk about the euglena when you talk about the outer outer covering it is the pellicle right it is not a proper cell wall it is a kind of proteinaceous layer and that proteinaceous layer provides the flexibility to the euglena okay what is it it is a proteinaceous layer and it is going to provide the flexibility to this euglena right so i'm just quoting one example from protista then when you talk about the plants in the case of plant cell wall is there that cell wall is having different composition if you talk about fungi again they are having cell wall but that cell wall is also having different composition so you cannot say that that all the eukaryotic cells are identical they are same no even their structure is different okay even their structure is different so this is what we are going to discuss today so here you guys can see the diagrams of plant and animal cell and this is what you need to draw as well and you need to write the differences in these two so will you write it or not tell me are you going to write it or not right tell me tell me tell me everyone satya bachche i think i think i think uh, we have explained it so many times but still many students are not aware of it kids the classes in avengers batch they will start from 25th of may okay let me tell you once again see you can go to our channel okay you can check any video you just need to check the description box okay you just need to click on the batch link if you want to join the avengers batch and you should join because it is one of the best batches that you can ever have because in this batch we are going to complete your syllabus in 6 months we will start from class 11th and then we will go to the class 12th the first thing second thing is that right you will get the mock test chapter wise mock test will be there the entire syllabus mock test will be there proper revision classes are going to be there we are going to guide you time to time so everything that you need to qualify the neat examination you will get it okay all the teachers are very good energetic and we have that agenda that whosoever is going to join us that that student should be the serious neat aspirant and we will help that student to clear the neat examination okay so i don't know even yesterday i was observing i think there is some issue in this link i'll check it so if you have joined it very good if not please join it as soon as possible because after 25th of may we are not going to accept any enrollment in our batch 
right then whatever is the reason we are not going to accept that and in avengers batch from 25th of may you people are going to get your classes okay done so now i think there is no confusion related to the avengers batch so now let's talk about the cell membrane and then we will talk about the cell wall and i'll tell you the differences as well so as i said bachche cell membrane is important the cell membrane is even present in protista in fungi plants and animals right cell membrane we even call it as plasma membrane we even call it as plasma membrane right and we even call it as plasma lemma you can use any word for it you can call it plasma membrane you can even call it plasma lemma okay these are the words that you can use for the cell membrane now when you talk about the cell membrane if you remember right right if you remember that part shawn remember shawn when he observed animal cells so he mentioned it that animal cells are having thin outer layer right thin outer layer and today we call it as plasma membrane and today we call it as plasma membrane done bachche done bachche right do you remember it if yes then please let me know in the chat section bachche i want you people to interact in the chat section your energy should be high whatever questions i'm asking you have to answer that for next one hour you need to you need to concentrate on what i'm saying okay be serious now and right now you are thinking acha what is the meaning of bachcha bachcha means kid kid this is my habit i use this word again and again whenever i used to say bachcha bachcha means kids kids okay and one more thing let me tell you now you are thinking that okay my exam is there in the next year on the may uh, 7th or 5th whatever it is right but let me tell you bachcha you will not even realize may will pass very quickly then june then july you will not even realize and then again you will start watching the same videos how to crack the aims delhi in 6 uh, months how to crack the aims in 3 months then you will watch the video how to crack the neat exam in 15 days so from aims right from aims you people will reach to any government medical college and then you will be like oh i should get selected in the neat exam even if i'm getting private college i'll be very happy right so that is how your motivation will come down and this is what i don't want from you and let me tell you let me tell you if you are serious neat aspirant then only join our avengers batch because you have to be consistent you have to be regular right by joining that batch there is no another option left like you will not get the time to scroll things here and there we are going to give you the homework we are going to teach you properly and we are going to check are you reading properly or not surprise test and everything will be there so be the part of avengers batch as soon as possible okay so please please do not waste your time but otherwise yes that that kid is right right soon dekhna videos will come like how to crack the neat examination in 1 minute how to crack the neat examination in 30 seconds and it is not possible at all you people are dreaming to be a doctor right doctor you have to study the entire body right you are going to give life to someone you are going to treat someone so obviously it needs hard work why do you have such syllabus uh, in your class 11th or 12th right you know that it is a memory based syllabus you have to you know even you have to understand the things you have to mug up the facts you, you your memory should be very good even why because you have to remember each and everything of human body you are going to treat it in such a way so for that you need to be hard working need is just the first step in mbbs bachche so many books are there that you need to read after mbbs you have to crack the exams for your md as well so please please be serious and if you are not serious no need to attend the classes please and don't waste your data do something else play games okay so now come to this topic so as i said shawn observed that in the animal cell there is thin outer layer and today we call it as cell membrane when we talk about the cell membrane to explain the structure of cell membrane we discuss fluid mosaic hypothesis do you remember this right we discuss fluid mosaic hypothesis isn't it and the fluid mosaic hypothesis is given by singer and nicolson right who gave the fluid mosaic hypothesis the fluid mosaic hypothesis is given by fluid mosaic uh, singer and nicolson but if we are using the word hypothesis right uh, hypothesis means they observe the things they analyze that yes it can happen in that way M means you cannot say that there is some surety ki okay 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 plasma membrane is like that only no they studied the plasma membrane they came to a conclusion ki okay as per our study we can say that the plasma membrane is like that okay so it is the hypothesis hypothesis they are saying ki yes 
ऐसा हो सकता है इट कैन हैपन समथिंग लाइक दैट ओके सो नो डाउट द मोस्ट वाइडली एक्सेप्टेबल मॉडल फॉर अंडरस्टैंडिंग द फ्लूड मोजाइक हाइपोथिस फॉर अंडरस्टैंडिंग द सेल मेम्ब्रेन इज फ्लूड मोजाइक हाइपोथिस बट इट इज नॉट द फर्स्ट मॉडल मेनी साइंटिस्ट दे ट्राई टू स्टडी द स्ट्रक्चर बट दे वर नॉट एबल टू एक्सप्लेन इट लाइक आई एल कोट टू एग्जाम्पल ऑफ टू मॉडल्स द वन इज योर सैंडविच मॉडल राइट वन इज योर sandwich model it is even known as trilaminar model not given in ncert still important let me tell you why okay so i'm just going to explain only two models here see one is sandwich model also known as trilaminar model and it was given by daniel and davison davison right daniel and davison sandwich model and the trilaminar model and the another model is bachche unit membrane model another is unit model or you can say that unit membrane model so it was given by robertson who gave it robertson and then then we have the fluid mosaic hypothesis the most widely acceptable model right so when you talk about the sandwich model or the unit membrane model let me tell you what what they have explained here see as per these models right there is no need to note down you just need to understand it the first word is trilaminar the another word is unit membrane then i'll come to the actual model so ultimately whosoever was studying the plasma membrane they make one thing very clear that it is made up of lipids it is made up of phospholipid right even they mentioned it that it is made up of phospholipid bilayer i will explain you the structure as well but as of now just understand it in this way only okay let's say this is the phospholipid bilayer bi means two phospholipid lipid is having that phosphate i'll explain that too so it is phospholipid bilayer so even in these models they have explained it but the point is when it was the trilaminar tri means three laminar means layer so here the scientists were like that there are three layers in the in the plasma membrane firstly this one is this phospholipid bilayer and this phospholipid bilayer is covered by from both the sides it is covered by the globular proteins this was explained in this trilaminar model what they explained that there is one phospholipid bilayer having the thickness of 35 angstroms right and then this phospholipid bilayer is covered from both the sides by the protein layers right these are the globular proteins as per the trilaminar model and this is 20 angstrom and this is again 20 angstrom are you getting it so overall plasma membrane is 75 angstrom this is the thickness that they have explained so trilaminar model three layers so it is just like a sandwich in a sandwich we used to have bread bread and in between stuffing is there na same as the case here so here you can see that bread slices and here in between you people can see that stuffing right so that is why they mentioned it as trilaminar model that is why they mentioned it as trilaminar model done bachche done bachche but again this model was not able to explain the transport of things across the membrane because we know that the plasma membrane the cell membrane is selectively permeable it is something which will allow the things to move in and to move out as per the need right as per the need like you can take the example of your mother mother used to say na ki in our home we have this thing we have that thing we want this thing in our place we do not want this thing we have to throw it out we have to keep it something like that same as the case here so plasma membrane will be like ki okay i want this thing and i don't want this thing so accordingly accordingly it will decide so here in this model trilaminar model they were not able to explain that how things were coming in and how things were going out so obviously it got rejected now when you talk about the unit membrane model as i said given by robertson okay given by robertson again this model was same they were considering the plasma membrane as a as a unit membrane they were saying it is made up of three layer robertson was saying it is made up of three layers but but he just mentioned that when it comes to the proteins they are extended they are not globular they are extended this is the only difference in this robertson model and in this trilaminar model so both of them were not able to explain the permeability of the plasma membrane so they got rejected so finally what do we have we have the fluid mosaic hypothesis that explained the structure of plasma membrane so now i will relate it with the fluid mosaic model but before that let's understand the actual structure of plasma membrane this is how bachche we used to draw it yes 
all of you even you can draw the diagrams with the class uh, with the session this is how we used to draw it yes or no this is important but you will get question from this particular part okay okay it is something like that isn't it it is something like that there are many other things that we need to discuss as well but just a minute okay see we have a cell what do we have we have a cell now in this cell this is the interior part the cytoplasm is there cell interior it is right cytoplasm is there and when you talk about this side this is the exterior part of cell right so we also use the word extracellular for it is that clear see this is a cell it is the interior part intracellular this is the cell this is the exterior part extracellular it is the exterior part extracellular right now here we have the plasma membrane here we have the plasma membrane so i am going to magnify this thing right and i will find a structure like this like this right so here in the plasma membrane we have this phospholipid bilayer right what is it it is phospholipid bilayer the word is phospholipid so what is the word here lipid and to that lipid phosphate is attached the another word is bilayer bi means two two layers are there here you can see one leaflet here you can see two second leaflet right so as per this diagram can i say that can i say that that this is the exterior side of the cell or can i say that it is the interior side of cell like it is the extracellular side it is the intracellular side it is the extracellular side it is the intracellular side can i mention it can i mention it yes everyone do let me know in the chat section and what about the likes but you do hit the like button as well and do subscribe our channel let's make it 50k as soon as possible now tell me bachche akhilesh obviously this this chapter is there in the ncrt so obviously it will come in neat 2025 so please have a look akhilesh do not spam gopika i have answered the same question yesterday please do not spam again and again done bachche so just mention it this is the exterior side this is the interior side this is the exterior side interior side so here you can see phospholipid bilayer and what are these structure these are the proteins now we have to understand this diagram properly right we have to understand each and every word here so the first thing that we need to focus is lipid what is lipid do you know anything about lipid yes bachche do you know anything about lipid lipid yes do you know anything about the word lipid yes no see whatever we are going to study it is from ncrt it is given in another chapter so i think we should understand it here now right now i am assuming that you don't know anything from the chapter biomolecules so i am going to explain you that what exactly is the lipid very good bachche surendra surendra lipid so when you talk about the lipid na bachche see like carbohydrates carbohydrates are made up of glucose like uh, polysaccharides they are made up of glucose glucose itself is made up of carbon hydrogen oxygen isn't it they are arranged differently we will discuss that in the chapter biomolecule but right now let's focus on the word lipid whenever we talk about the lipid firstly we talk about the glycerol right glycerol see bachche the word is glycerol ol is there ol means alcohol ol means alcohol isn't it glycerol ol means alcohol means one functional group is alcohol there which is present so if i talk about the structure of glycerol it's very simple three carbons right and here you need to attach oh oh and oh it is the oh right oh means alcohol right basic chemistry it is isn't it it is the basic chemistry that you need to know ol ol means alcohol alcohol means which functional group oh it is oh it is right bachche so here we have three carbons and oh is attached to it and rest you need to add the hydrogen only you just need to add the hydrogen only because you want to satisfy the valency so can i say that ch2oh chohh and ch2oh so basically it is tri tripropanol isn't it 
three carbons are there, so it is tripropanol, isn't it? Trihydroxypropanol rather, trihydroxypropanol. So this is basically the glycerol. It is basically the glycerol. Very simple structure. It is having very simple structure, right? Okay, so now to that glycerol, you just need to add fatty acid. What do you need to add? You need to add fatty acid, right? We are talking about the lipid. Why are we discussing the lipid? Because our plasma membrane is made up of phospholipid. So we should understand what exactly is the phospholipid. We need to clear our basics if you want to crack the NEET examination. So here you guys can see glycerol. Now the word is fatty acid. But the functional group, the acid is the word. So obviously the functional group is, the functional group is C double bond OOH. Right. What will we get here? C double bond OOH. It is the acid that we are discussing. C double bond OOH. Isn't it? Yes or no? Yes or no? So to this glycerol, we are going to add fatty acids. So fatty acid is nothing. It will be having the carbon hydrogen chain along with this functional group. Like you can draw it even C double bond OOH. Let me show you here. C double bond OOH and rest will be your alkyl group that's carbon hydrogen chain carbon hydrogen chain carbon hydrogen chain will be there right carbon hydrogen chain will be there are you getting my point so what is going to happen in the case of a lipid see here have a look this is the carboxylic acid right this is the acidic group this is the alcohol that you have obviously these two are going to join okay these two are going to join and water will be released and there will be the formation of the bond the ester bond will be here Right, which bond we will get here? We will get the ester bond. Like I'll quote one example. So here you people can see, right, this H2O will get out. The H2O will be eliminated. Okay, the H2O will be eliminated. So what will be the structure there? It is important. Please mark it. So the bond will be okay so here you can see this bond this will be the ester bond isn't it this will be the ester bond okay so so that is how to the glycerol not just one fatty acid you can add another fatty acid also right so if one fatty acid is there monoglyceride if two fatty acids are attached diglyceride if three fatty acids are attached it will be the triglyceride so this is how we are going to make the lipid the first point is clear or not tell me is the first point clear or not glycerol plus fatty acid it will join obviously the ester bond will form in between right so what is going to happen to this glycerol the fatty acid will join and here we will get the structure lipid so what you need to remember here what you need to remember here see here also you will get one more fatty acid here also you will be having another fatty acid to this part to this third carbon to this third carbon uh, can you see that to this third carbon what will happen here here phosphate phosphate will be there and then choline this is the functional group that we are going to get here right your okay this p and this choline you will get here when you are talking about the phospholipid the word is phospholipid okay the word is what the word is phospholipid so this Phosphorus attached to the colon will be present here. So this is the structure of a phospholipid. And you must be thinking that ma'am, why are you mentioning the word colon here? Right, we will talk about its chemical structure also, which it is given in your NCRT in the chapter biomolecules. Right, it is given in your NCRT, it is given in your chapter biomolecule. So now when, when phosph phosph uh, this phosphorus is present here, so obviously this is the phospholipid and the most common phospholipid which will be there in your cell membrane that will be the lecithin right that will be the lecithin so here you can see with this functional group is that clear is that clear yes or no is that clear so here you can see glycerol one fatty acid another fatty acid so to this third carbon this phosphorus is present and along with that choline is attached okay choline is attached here is that clear Choline is attached here. So it is phospholipid lecithin which is present in the cell membrane. And even when you talk about the alveoli, alveoli are also covered with this lecithin. It is a surfactant there. You can mention it in your notes. You can mention it in your notes. So now the structure of phospholipid clear or not? Do let me know in the chat section. Quick, do let me know in the chat section. Quick, everyone. 
quick, quick, quick. The structure of phospholipid clear? So can I say that glycerol plus two fatty acid and one will be that choline and phosphate group? Okay. Done? Sure? Sure? So how to draw it? See, when, whenever we check the structure of plasma membrane, the phospholipids are represented like this. Yes or no? Phospholipids are represented like this. Now, what is the mean? Uh, what is the meaning of this part? See, this is the head of that phospholipid, and this is the tail of that phospholipid. It is the head of that phospholipid, and it is the tail of that phospholipid. So, when you talk about the head in the head region, you will be having that glycerol part, bache, right? Along with that choline part. Okay, and when you talk about this tail, this tail is nothing. This tail is showing the fatty acid. This tail is nothing. It is showing the fatty acid. So this is how they are present. So what is the chemical structure? When you talk about the phospholipid, glycerol is attached to the fatty acid. Two fatty acids are there and then choline and this phosphorus group is present. Okay, and here you can see this is how it is present. The head region will be having glycerol plus this choline part and then the fatty acid. Then the fatty acid. This is how it is placed. Now, just look at this head and tail region. You must be thinking that ma'am, why? See, it is the structure of a lipid. It is the structure of a lipid. And it is playing very important role when it comes to the permeability. We are now going to discuss it. We are now going to, right, we are now going to understand it. So, before that, now, let's finish this phospholipid part first. And do mention the word lecithin in your notes because it is the most common phospholipid. It is even present in alveoli as the surfactant. So, this is what you need to write down. And everything is given in NCRT. Everything is given in NCRT. Okay? Okay, Arpan, you're just wasting your time. I'm not going to pay the attention, bache. First of all, learn the spelling of fraud, bache. Right? You don't even know the spellings of fraud. Please learn that. Leave biology. Focus on English first. Okay? Done? So, please focus here kindly. Done, bache. So, this is the head part. Head part is polar. And when it comes to the tail, it is non-polar. Right, head part is polar and when it comes to the tail, it is non-polar. If I talk about the diagram, diagram is important, huh? So, I am going to draw a very bad diagram, but that diagram will help you out to understand the topic. See. So, phospholipid bilayer, but why this, why bilayer is present? Let me tell you. When you talk about this lipid, this portion, this portion is lipophilic. It is lipophilic. Philic means loving. What is the meaning of philip? Philic means loving. What is the meaning of philic, but loving. It is lipid loving. This tail part, this fatty acid tail is what? It is lipid loving now when you talk about the head part it is water loving it is hydrophilic what is it it is hydrophilic right hydrophilic let me mention here so head part tail part tail part is what tail part is lipophilic philic means lovable loving right it is lipid loving and when you talk about the head part it is hydrophilic right it is hydrophilic so if it is lipophilic Right, so obviously, obviously it is hydrophobic now. It is in love with lipid, but it hates the water. It is in love with lipid, but it hates the water. This is what you need to remember. And when you talk about this portion, this is hydrophilic. It is in love with water, but it hates the, it hates the lipid. Right, so whenever you talk about this phospholipid layer, if you are going to keep the single layer, it is not possible. Why? Because this end hates water. Right, this end hates water. It, 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 is, it cannot touch the water. Just assume one case. Let's say there is a cell membrane and here in the cell membrane, there is only one lipid layer. Right, there is only one phospholipid layer. It will not be possible. Why? Just have a look here, bache. If, if there will be single layer only, so obviously this side, this side will come in touch with the water. Yes or no? Yes or no? The tails will. 
right if there will be only single layer just imagine there is only single layer there is no two layers so obviously the ends are going to be the ends will touch the water but they are not water lovable they are lipid lovable they are lipophilic they are hydrophobic so it is not possible so whenever you will keep the phospholipids in water automatically they are going to form a bilayer okay automatically they are going to form a bilayer right right they are automatically going to form a bilayer why because the layer is in such a way now just look at the exterior and the interior side just have a look of exterior and interior side this part is water loving this part is water loving this part is water heating so it is facing each other it is facing each other and when you focus on this part on the polar head see it is facing the water even it is facing the water right inside cytoplasm is there cytoplasm is having the water and when you talk about the extracellular fluid it is also having the water so only water loving part is facing the water and water hating part is coming towards the inner side so in this way they are forming a water resistant they are, they are forming a kind of barrier here are you getting it why such structure is there why right for the stability the structure is there so if up to this part all clear yes or no up to this part all clear yes or no so one is the polar head another is the non polar tail tail is having the fatty acid bache right tail is having the fatty acid right so here you can say in one molecule two different properties are there so can we not say that that uh, the phospholipid is amphipathic right because both it is hydrophilic as well it is hydrophobic as well so can we not say that that it is amphipathic yes or no yes or no can we not say that that it is amphi amphi pathic amphi means dual nature it is having dual nature it is having right bachche right bachche so this is what you need to remember in the case of phospholipid they can even ask you which part is the uh, which part is the water loving which part is the water heavy hating so polar and non polar this is how you have to remember it so glycerol and this colon part is present in the head the fatty acid is present in the tail is that clear is that clear done bachche now this is the one thing and the another thing is the protein just look at this 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 tunnel like structure it is also a protein this is a tunnel protein this is a channel protein even it is also a protein you can call it as a carrier protein so now right by just looking at it you can you can assume that what type of structure is there in the plasma membrane so whenever we talk about the plasma membrane bachche so in the plasma membrane right in the plasma membrane we have the phospholipid right along with that we have the proteins uh, we have the, yeah we have the proteins right so when you talk about the plasma membrane what do we have we have the phospholipid and we have the protein like if i talk about the fluid mosaic hypothesis so it is given in ncert right they have studied the rbc membrane right they have studied the rbc membrane okay okay so when they studied the rbc membrane they found the lipids and the proteins there by lipid uh, layer uh, by phospholipid bilayer is there and along with that proteins are present and when you talk about the position of the proteins so you can say right at times they are deeply embedded they are even present at the periphery so different different type of arrangement of protein is there it is just like a mosaic right bachche it is just like what it is just like a mosaic so mosaic is like you have the group of different different items you have the uh, lipids also you have the proteins also at points we will even see in this plasma membrane we will even see the presence of cholesterol right to these heads the structures that are present on this side they are basically the they are basically the polysaccharide they are basically the oligosaccharide are you getting my point they are basically the oligosaccharide so obviously this plasma membrane is just like a mosaic different different things are there right they are grouped together they are forming a structure so up to this part all clear yes bachche up to this part all clear bachche amphi means dual amphi pathic molecule it is having both the properties hydrophilic as well hydrophobic i'll quote one another example like in the case of amino acid you talk about the zwitter ion again we mentioned zwitter ion is what it is the amphoteric it is cation as well and ion as well electrically neutral like this right like this bachche i'm going very slow you can slow down the speed if you are not comfortable in that right bachche so firstly tell me phospholipid bilayer part is clear it is having 30 it is 35 angstrom phospholipid bilayer is clear yes or no yes or no this part clear then we will talk about the proteins 
so as per ncrt i'm telling you so where so in the ncrt they have mentioned that they have checked the rbc membrane so lipid part is uh, protein part is near about 54 percent and you can 52 percent and when you talk about the lipids they are making the 40 percent part so from this diagram you cannot just judge that we have the we have the uh, for, uh, more lipids no no protein part is more protein part is more so 40 percent near about 40 percent is your phospholipid and rest is protein when you talk about the rbc membrane so this is how the distribution is right proteins are more lipids are less proteins are more lipids are less is that clear is that clear so now we will talk about the protein part but before that tell me the phospholipid bilayer clear now you know why do we have bilayer now you know the arrangement right you know the arrangement as well now let's talk about the proteins okay let's talk about the proteins so when you talk about the proteins of this plasma membrane so bache we discuss it in two ways one is intrinsic also known as integral also known as interior protein and the another thing is exterior proteins or you can also say peripheral proteins right peripheral proteins so we are naming it as per the position of these proteins like when you talk about the plasma membrane in the plasma membrane just look at the structure here right but some proteins are deeply embedded right they are just traversing the plasma membrane what are they doing they are just traversing the plasma membrane right but they are present they are so deeply embedded if i have to extract these proteins i need to break the plasma membrane isn't it isn't it if i have to extract this particular protein from the plasma membrane i have to break the plasma membrane so interior proteins they are and some proteins are present on this periphery they are present on the exterior side right they are present on the exterior sides so without damaging the plasma membrane i can even remove it are you getting my point i can even remove it so that is why right how can we extract the protein on the on that basis we have divided it like this intrinsic extrinsic right intrinsic extrinsic intrinsic also known as integral extrinsic exterior also known as peripheral also known as peripheral now bachche when you talk about these peripheral proteins obviously present on the outer side or ex outer side of plasma membrane of course now these proteins these proteins what is the function of these proteins here in the plasma membrane right they are randomly distributed you cannot say that that uh, proper positions fixed positions are there no randomly they are present on the cell surface on the cell membrane so now these peripheral proteins these exterior proteins mostly they function like right mostly they function as their function is as an enzyme enzymes you know na enzymes are also proteins so basically these uh, these peripheral proteins right these peripheral proteins they are more like enzymes they are more like enzymes right bachche right bachche sanjeevna it varies but roughly you can say that sanjeevna the proteins are near about 40 the proteins are near about 50 to 60 percent right right and lipids are 40 percent like this sanjeevna is that clear is that clear exterior proteins mostly they function like the enzymes now come to the intrinsic protein so some intrinsic proteins are deeply embedded right they even trans traverse the plasma membrane they are making like a tunnel right just have a look and he, here in intrinsic also we have two categories partially buried okay or totally so here you can see when they are totally embedded like this they are forming a kind of channel they are forming a kind of channel right bachche right bachche and moreover here you will find some proteins like this right you will find some proteins like this they are partially buried okay they are partially buried so now uh, do you know about the position of these proteins now i'll tell you what is the role of these intrinsic protein and for that again we need to understand the diagram first okay again we need to do what we need to understand the diagram first so just have a look bache it is important and i think you should even practice 
you should even practice this diagram and with the help of this diagram i will even explain the transport across plasma membrane so please listen to me very carefully okay listen to me very carefully i'm going to explain the transport of plasma membrane as well so see what is happening bachche whatever is lipid soluble because the this part this is the phospholipid bilayer so whatever is lipid soluble right whatever is lipid soluble it can easily cross the plasma membrane hai na like uh, again this plasma membrane this phospholipid bilayer is partial right it is biased it is biased for those it is like are even i am the lipid you are the lipid okay you can come you can come isn't it you can come like we indians when we go to the foreign countries and if you will meet any india other indian there so we have that bonding na indian 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 oh okay let's help each other we all are indian same same as the case here so here if something is lipid soluble if something which can uh, which can pass from lipid lipid soluble things can pass from lipids they can easily come in i'll quote one example here like you you know about some hormones let's take the example of hormone estrogen right right it's a steroid it is also a kind of lipid it's a steroid so it can cross the plasma membranes directly it can cross the right it can cross the plasma membrane directly but what about the things which are not lipid soluble right we have another things in the cell cell also we need another things in the cell also which are not lipid soluble even they are charged right even they are charged okay so you can say that lipid insoluble things and charged molecules polar molecules they cannot cross this phospholipid bilayer directly okay the lipid insoluble things even the charged molecule they cannot cross cell membrane directly right bachche they cannot cross cell membrane directly so what will they do they need some channels they need some channels so here you can see this protein it is the channel protein we can also call it as tunnel protein it is just like a tunnel right so let's take the example of water so your water molecule it cannot directly cross the plasma membrane so with the help of these channel this water molecule will cross and and the channels from where the water is going to cross we used to call it as aqua porens porens means pore like structure aqua means water that are the aqua porens what are they they are the aqua porens right they are the aqua porens so the, the, these are aqua porens are made up of eight different type of proteins right so i'm giving you the example of channel protein i told you that channel proteins are also known as tunnel protein so i have given one example of aqua porin so aqua word is related to the water porin means pore like structure so you can see the diagram even here bachche like let's say this is a cell here you are having this channel protein aqua porin the water and even you can say that some along with water even charged thing like your ammonium ion can even cross these aquaporins right even the ammonium ion can cross this aquaporin so see this is how the water is going to come inside the cell and bachche yes this is what you should mention in your notes that when you talk about the aquaporins so they are made up of eight proteins okay right i have to uh, uh, let me draw this like let's say this is a tunnel protein so it is made up of eight different different type of protein okay eight different type of proteins are making this channel so by the help of that the water will come in and, and along with water like your ammonium ions can also cross this aquaporin so for the charged things right and for the things which are not soluble in water we need such tunnel proteins right and you cannot say that that anything any charged molecule can cross these tunnel proteins no the specificity should be there right moreover it depends upon size as well okay it depends upon size as well okay bachche is that clear so these are the channel proteins so directly they will allow the things to come in and come out now bachche we have one more word if you have noticed i mentioned it separately that we have the channel proteins also and we have the carrier proteins also right when it comes to the integral protein i mentioned that when they are totally buried in the cell membrane there are two type one is the channel protein and another is the 
one is the channel protein another is the carrier protein can you tell me the difference in two yes bachche can you just tell me the difference in two anyone in the class do you know the difference in two channel protein and carrier protein carrier protein anyone yes what is the difference channel protein and carrier protein bachche for that for, to understand that difference you should know about the transport first and again it is also a, an important topic right so when you talk about the transport we have two words one is the active transport bachche another word is passive transport right one is the active transport another is the passive transport so when the word is passive transport right things will flow or will move as per their concentration gradient right how will they move as per their concentration gradient right or you can say that along or down the concentration gradient in simple words if i have to mention it so you can say that along and down the concentration gradient so it means that things will move from their high concentration to low concentration they will move from their high concentration to low concentration isn't it samiksha isn't it from their high concentration to low concentration things are going to move so it is the along the concentration gradient down the concentration gradient so we do not need any atp here we do not need any energy here so this is the passive transport but when you talk about the a a for active a for atp a for against this is how you have to remember it a for atp a for against right so here things will move against their concentration gradient right against their concentration gradient things will move okay bachche against their concentration gradient things will move so if they are moving against the concentration gradient the atp is required the energy is required right so here they are moving from low concentration to the high concentration with the help of energy with the help of atp with the help of energy with the help of atp are you getting my point are you getting my point yes bachche so let me tell you the example which is even given in your uh, ncrt let's say here we have the uh, carrier okay so do you remember the example of sodium potassium atps pump or sodium potassium atp pump right sodium potassium atp pump so in sodium potassium atp pump bachche outside the sodium is too much outside the concentration of sodium is more and inside the concentration of so potassium is more when you talk about the cells right even if you talk about the muscle cells you are talking about the neurons so inside the potassium is more outside the sodium is more let me mention it potassium is more and outside the sodium is more so if outside sodium is more right means outside the sodium is having more concentration inside the potassium is having more concentration but i am giving you the example of sodium potassium atps pump here so what is happening in this pump bachche sodium is coming inside three sodiums three sodium ions they will come inside and two potassium ions they will go outside and how how with the help of atp okay so it is the sodium potassium atps pump so can i not say that kavya that things are moving against the concentration gradient outside sodium is more inside potassium is more but still sodium is coming in potassium is going out so things are moving against the concentration gradient so it is the example of your it is the example of your active transport along the plasma membrane and how is it possible with the help of that carrier protein these ions cannot cross the plasma membrane directly so what do they have they are having the carrier proteins so when you are saying carrier proteins right when you are saying carrier proteins so these are the proteins which are going to use the atp for the transport they use atp are you getting it for the transport they use atp dan bachche dan bachche now the difference between channel protein and carrier protein is clear yes or no the difference between channel protein and carrier protein is clear yes or no let me know in the chat section everyone okay okay so here you can see three sodium will come out two potassium will go out and it is even important in neural control and coordination so you better remember it right you better remember it so i'll give you one trick here the trick is no 
किया किंतु राइट नो किया किंतु दिस इज द ट्रिक नो किया किंतु एन स्टैंड फॉर सोडियम एन ए ओ मीन्स आउट एन स्टैंड फॉर सोडियम ओ मीन्स आउट के मीन्स पोटाशियम ओके आई मीन्स इन ए मीन्स ए टी पी ओके ओके एन मीन्स अ सोडियम ओ मीन्स आउट के मीन्स पोटाशियम आई मीन्स इन विद द हेल्प ऑफ ए टी पी एंड सेम किंतु पोटाशियम इन हाउ मेनी पोटाशियम विल कम इन टू पोटेशियम वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ दिस किन टू राइट के पोटाशियम विल कम इन एंड हाउ मेनी पोटाशियम विल कम इन टू पोटाशियम राइट राइट टू पोटाशियम दान बच्चे दान बच्चे ओके ओके is that clear so this is the meaning of active transport and this is the role of these carrier proteins so some changes conformational changes will occur they will move the things in and out according uh, right against the concentration gradient so i hope now you know the meaning of channel protein you know the meaning of carrier protein you know the role of right peripheral proteins you know the role of phospholipids any doubt in this part any doubt in this part and yes for carrier protein there is one more word that is permeases right for carrier protein we also use the word permeases okay we also use the word permeases clear bachche clear short sure. short sure. so here you can see these are this is how the things are going to move across the plasma membrane so ultimately we can say that the fluid mosaic hypothesis it explains the selectively permeable nature of plasma membrane as well it explains the transport of things across the membrane it explains how charged things and how uncharged things obviously on the basis of their size how can they cross the plasma membrane is that clear okay okay now bachche it is not just the see when i talk about the plasma membrane okay uh, just a minute yes when i talk about the phospholipid bilayer when we talk about this fluid mosaic hypothesis right we mention it phospholipids are there proteins are there and these oligosaccharides are also present and moreover in between this plasma membrane you are having the cholesterol as well right in the animal cell you will find the cholesterol as well right this is what you need to remember firstly let me explain you the role of cholesterol then we will talk about the other things also right so cholesterol cholesterol sterol even it is also a steroid right it is also a kind of lipid it helps in the formation of sex hormones as well cholesterol so cholesterol is present in animal cell it is not present in bacterial cells bachche even cholesterol is absent in plant cells also it is not even present in bacterial cells it is not even present in the plant cells in the plant cells they have some another sterols they are not cholesterols but another sterols are there this is the first thing now what is the role of this and why why do we draw the chains like that now we will talk about the you know fluidity of the plasma membrane right there are different different words which i'm going to explain then finally we will revise the everything from the ncert so all your basics will be clear okay so all your basics will be clear okay bachche okay so cholesterol is the word now bachche what is happening see when you talk about the fatty acids okay there are two things one is the saturated fatty acids another is unsaturated right right saturated means only single bond is there in that chain only single bond is present there in the chain and when you talk about the unsaturated obviously double or triple bond is there right double or triple bond is there now which is plasma membrane is neither the solid it is nor the liquid right if you remember if you uh, know this line plasma membrane is quasi fluid in nature right plasma membrane is what it is quasi fluid in nature quasi means semi right it is a semi what is it it is a semi fluid in nature 
the plasma membrane should not be solid because if it will be solid the things will not be able to move properly and if it will be liquid right if it will be entirely be liquid obviously then again it will not be able to intact everything properly isn't it it will not be able to intact everything properly so the plasma membrane is quasi fluid in nature neither solid nor liquid it is semi fluid in nature now here in the plasma membrane we have saturated fatty acid also unsaturated fatty acids also but actually this unsaturation will make that plasma membrane more fluid right more unsaturation means plasma membrane will be more like fluid right more like fluid okay plasma membrane will be more like fluid and if there are more saturated fatty acid plasma membrane will be less fluid so obviously there should be a balance because we have to maintain it like this right we have to maintain it like this i'll quote one example here like in the case of wheat right in the case of wheat wheat you know na do you know about wheat yes or no everyone let me know in the chat section all of you do you know about wheat yes bachche these classes are very important right please listen to me very carefully the information that i am giving you it is present in ncert right if i am teaching you about the lipids about the glycerols and phospholipids and all it is present in biomolecule nothing is beyond ncert so it is important please have a look okay done done bachche so wheat in the case of wheat right just before the winters in the case of wheats the cell membrane will have more unsaturated fatty acid it is just like an adaptation bachche right it is just like an adaptation in the case of wheat just before the winters in the plasma membrane we will be having more right we will be having more unsaturated fatty acid so it is just like an adaptation because in winters you know that things are things will become solidified now they will and the things will become solidified so they they increase the amount of unsaturated fatty acid so that plasma membrane should remain like a fluid right it should remain like a fluid it should not become solid so this this is the role of the things which are present so whenever we draw the chains like that right these bends these kinks they show the double bond these bends these kinks they show the double bond so this unsaturation is also there more unsaturated fatty acid the plasma membrane will be more like fluid less less unsaturated fatty acid means it will be less fluid moreover yashwant bachche we have the cholesterol also right cholesterol also so cholesterol maintains that thing right cholesterol helps in maintaining the fluidity it it acts right cholesterol maintains the fluidity maintains the fluid like nature basically this is what you can say right so it will not see if if winter is there right so because it is present in between the phospholipid bilayer na so if winter is there it will not allow the phospholipid to come very closer and to solidify if there is the you know summers are there it will not allow it to become more like liquid it will maintain it so it it you can say that it acts like a buffer it maintains this part right it maintains this part and moreover bachche here in the phospholipid bilayer you know it very well okay you know it very well that these phospholipids just have a look right these phospholipids in the same leaflet they can change the position they are not fixed they can change the position with their neighbor like let's say here i'm naming it like this 1 2 3 4 so the second phospholipid can come to the first position first can go to the third it can go to the second like this so these phospholipids can exchange their position and along with that these proteins can also exchange their position here in the plasma membrane okay here in the plasma membrane so basically they can move right they can move they are not fixed so this property is fluidity right this property is fluidity again and again i was using the word fluidity na so bachche it is an important question so fluidity is that these phospholipids can exchange position with their neighboring phospholipid this is the fluidity bachche it is important yashwant because it is giving it if it is giving the plasma membrane the fluid like nature okay it is giving this plasma membrane the fluid like nature are you getting my point are you getting my point so it is the fluidity even proteins can exchange their position even the phospholipids can exchange their position okay okay so what is it what is the word here the word here is fluidity fluid like it is 
fluid like so up to this part all clear yes everyone up to this part all clear sure sure so one more thing here you are having different phospholipids right or you can say that both the leaves both the leaves of phospholipid they are asymmetrical right they are not same bachche they are asymmetrical even it is given in ncrt if you talk about both the leaflets they are asymmetrical it is having different phospholipids it is having different phospholipids here you will find different phospholipid here you will find different phospholipid so we used to say that both the leaflets are asymmetrical what are they anjana they are asymmetrical it is the asymmetrical which is the key word here okay so and one more thing when you talk about the interior side and the exterior side of the cell interior side is having different proteins exterior is having different like when you talk about the exterior side here to these lipids some oligosaccharides are attached some oligosaccharides are attached even to the proteins that are present here even to the proteins that are present here to these proteins also the oligosaccharides are attached right bachche oligosaccharides carbohydrates are attached so if these carbohydrates are attached to the lipids we will call it glycolipids right and even if these oligosaccharides are attached to the protein we call it as glycoprotein okay so they are important you will find it towards the exterior leaflet of the cell right and towards the interior side you are not going to find it you will only find it towards the exterior side you will not find it in the exterior interior side so these glycolipids and glycoproteins glycoproteins but check they are very important they help in cell to cell recognition okay they act like receptors right so they are having different different roles so you must be thinking ma'am what is the meaning of cell to cell recognition the best example is of sperm and egg remember sperm and egg at the time of fertilization sperm is going to bind the receptors over the sperm they will bind to the receptors present over the ovum do you remember that so cell to cell recognition for that cell to cell recognition these these are uh, glycolipids and protein these glycoproteins are uh, basically important and moreover moreover these oligosaccharides right they are going to give that cell they are going to mark that cells as the self cell they will tell it to the immune cell that this is my cell my body cell do not destroy it right this is my body cell do not destroy it so this is the role so you will find it towards the exterior side but you will not find it towards the interior side so you can see that difference as well okay bachche so now i'm going to highlight two major words the one is fluidity so fluidity means these phospholipids or protein can exchange their position with the neighboring phospholipids fluidity it is giving it a fluid like property cholesterol is also acting like a buffer it will not let that plasma membrane to become very solid or to become more like water this is the first point second thing one more movement is there and for that movement the word is flip flop right what is the word the word is flip flop i am writing this word here flip flop it is not given in ncrt but many years back one pyq was there so i thought i should share it with you flip flop flip flop if phospholipid from this leaflet if it will go to this leaflet this movement is flip flop which is very rare yashwant right anish bachche it is a very rare movement flip flop if phospholipid from one leaflet if it moves to the another leaflet this is a flip flop if they are exchanging position with the neighboring neighboring phospholipids then it is just the fluidity but if it is moving from this to this side it is the flip flop very rare movement and it occurs during ha when there is cancer you know in uh, in the case of cancer phospholipid from this side they will go to this side it is acting like a marker that this cell is cancerous this cell is cancerous excellent samiksha very good very good okay 
ओके नो दिस इज नॉट रिलेटेड टू फ्लूडिटी इट इज अ जनरल थिंग दैट आई एम टेलिंग सो बच्चे दिस इज ऑल अबाउट द प्लाज्मा मेमरी नाउ जस्ट लेट जस्ट रिवाइज इट लेट्स रिवाइज इट फ्रॉम द एन सी आर टी सो दैट यू विल बी हैविंग द बेटर क्लैरिटी सो आई होप यू अंडरस्ट आई होप यू ऑल आर एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस पर्टिकुलर टॉपिक बिकॉज आई टोल्ड यू ईच एंड एवरीथिंग रिलेटेड टू दिस टॉपिक ईच एंड एवरीथिंग रिलेटेड टू दिस टॉपिक ऑल द इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग्स इवन वी हैव कवर्ड ओके so if there is any doubt do let me know so bachche such type of quality content you people are going to get in our batches as well so in our batches you are not just getting the quality content along with that personal guidance will be there along with that you are going to get the test series as well question practice will be there in the sessions we are going to provide you the study material that this is what you need to study that is what you need to ignore everything will be given to you so do join our avengers batch because it is a limited time offer bachche and classes are going to start from 25th of may and to avoid your backlogs i think you all should be the part of this batch as soon as possible okay as soon as possible okay so now let's read it from the ncert so here you can see the cell membrane the detailed structure it was studied after the advent of electron microscope so electron micro i told you na microscopy is the key here right with the uh, whenever there was a, with the help of that advancement in microscopy we were able to understand the cell structure the minute minute details of the cell okay so here you can see in 1950 obviously the electron microscope came so with the help of that we were able to you know see the uh, smaller smaller things we, we were able to study the cell structures properly so here you can see the chemical studies on cell membrane especially in human rbc it enable the scientists to deduce the possible structure of plasma membrane so this is what you have to remember that scientists they studied rbc to understand the structure of plasma membrane right what they studied they studied the rbc okay so peripheral protein integral protein i have already mentioned so even we this is the part that we are going to cover so see so lipids and proteins are making majorly the plasma membrane so you know that major lipids are what they are the phospholipids major lipids are what they are the phospholipids right which are present in bilayer i already explained you that why right why it is the bilayer i told you already right bachche bachche batch will start from 25th of may not 18th of may mr motif to okay so lipids are arranged within the membrane with the polar head towards the outer side and the hydrophobic tail towards the inner part remember right polar head is towards the outer side and hydro hydrophobic tail is towards the inner side and in this way they are just making a they are just protecting this tail from the aqueous environment from the water they are just protecting it tail protecting the tail right bachche so see this arrangement ensures that no non polar tail of the saturated hydrocarbon it is protected from the aqueous environment right bachche right bachche so i mentioned it that phospholipid along with phospholipid cholesterol is also there cholesterol so cholesterol is present in animal cell it is not present in bacterial cell membrane it is not present in plant cell membrane right you can mention it in your notes cholesterol is present in it is present in animal cell it is absent in your bacterial cell it is absent in your plants in the plants they have another sterols they do not have cholesterol they have another sterol now the next point biochemical investigation clearly revealed that the cell membrane is having protein and carbohydrate also right oligosaccharides which are attached to the proteins and to the lipids so ratio of protein and lipid it vary bachche so if you talk about the rbcs 52% protein and 40% lipids are there so this information is important right you should note down it in your notes you should mention it in your notes okay so on the ease of extraction whether we can directly extract that protein or you know uh, like i gave you the example of peripheral protein we can remove it very easily without disrupting the cell, uh, cell membrane so on that position on the ease of extraction we divide these protein into two parts okay so they are classified as integral and peripheral so peripheral is present on the cell surface of cell membrane and integral is totally or partially buried in the membrane clear bachche so you can see this location so you see this phosphate is there phosphate is there right 
and the glycerol is present phosphate is there and this phosphate is attached to the choline this is what you need to remember then it will become lecithin and here you can see the saturated fatty acid and unsaturated so wherever you will get that kinks now it is like this this kink is there it is showing the double bond it is showing the double bond okay bachche okay bachche so here you can see the structure properly the exterior side just have a look of glycoprotein protein with carbohydrate attached right help in the recognition glycolipids lipids with carbohydrate attached and towards the inner side just have a look these are the peripheral membrane protein these are the integral proteins bachche these are the cytoskeletal element right i'll uh, share one thing here you know some tunnel protein some carrier proteins right towards the inner side they are attached to the cytoskeletal element and towards the towards the outer side you know some proteins towards the inner side of the cell they are attached to the cytoskeletal element and towards the exterior side they are attached to the extracellular membrane of you know like let's say cells are like this right so some proteins are attached to the inner cytoskeletal element and the same protein is attached to the fibers of extracellular proteins here right so in this way they also help in that attachment in this way they also support the structure okay in this way they also supports the structure right bachche right bachche so at points such type of proteins are also there which are going to link one cell with the another so that they can provide that structure stability and all okay okay so you can see the diagram from the ncrt so i think now there is no doubt so see even cholesterol is even mentioned in the ncrt so it will keep the proper spacing in between the phospholipid it will not allow it to become the solid as well right bachche so here you people can see the improved model of the structure was proposed by singer and nicholson very important even you need to remember the year right it is fluid mosaic so as per this this is the there is the quasi fluid nature of lipids which enables lateral movement of protein within the overall bilayer quasi fluid means semi fluid nature of lipids right bachche so lateral movement means here we are talking about the fluidity here we are talking about the fluidity right so ability to move within the membrane is the fluidity it is the fluidity it is important okay it is important so this fluid like nature is very important because it will allow the cell membrane to grow right it will help in formation of junctions as well in secretion endocytosis and cell division so the function is important but okay so it helps in the growth of the cell in the formation of junctions you know no, there are different different junctions i'll quote one example let's say this is one cell this is another cell if it is the plant cell right if it is a animal cell the continuous cytoplasmic junction gap junction remember even the tight junctions are also there which is of different type right now i'm telling you about the gap junction so such same gap junctions in plants they are known as plasmodesmata remember this word so this is your homework you will mention the meaning of plasmodesmata in the comment section after the class okay in the comment section you have to mention the word plasmodesmata and what is endocytosis endo means inside the cell so here you can consider cell drinking like pinocytosis okay you can consider phagocytosis cell eating like you know na cell can engulf some things inside the cell the th things can in enter inside the cell phagocytosis it can engulf the things right cell drinking the water will enter okay okay so here you can see bachche we have covered everything even i told you about the passive and the active transport also so even the examples are also given so just read it from the ncrt and revise it properly because this topic is important so i have cleared all your doubts related to the protein integral exterior what is the function of uh, interior proteins what is the function of peripheral proteins we have covered everything bachche ncrt right you must be thinking that only 38 chapters are there right we will cover it we have the entire year no no you have to remember it again and again okay you have to remember it again and again the key the key to get selected in the neat exam is the consistency right you need to be consistent bachche you need to be consistent let's say if you start now let's say you are starting in the may or let's say you are starting in the june right so if from june to december let's complete your syllabus 
let's complete your syllabus from june to december and in the month of january february march april right in these four months you can revise it again and again ncrt theoretical it is right there are many things many concepts that you people need to understand and there are many things which you need to mug up as well and nowadays if i talk about the neat exam pattern so it is more it is based on the memory basically okay uh, earlier we used to have the aims exam in the aims exam conceptual questions used to come but now in the neat exam they are just asking the theory based question so for that you need a very you know you need to revise the things properly even you have the physics right even you have the chemistry so do not waste your time do not waste your time please be consistent be consistent and on youtube you are going to get the quality content without any doubt but that regularity will not be there you won't get the classes regularly you won't get that proper schedule that today this is the chapter uh, this is the chapter that i'm going to complete next day this is what i have to do see initially we had 100 plus student now there are just 68 students okay so you can see the difference even you are not able to focus on youtube a lot of distraction is there see we have one student gopika shri again and again mentioning same thing even teacher is ignoring the text still they are mentioning the same thing they are just here to distract you people okay so on youtube you don't get that batch like feeling so that is why we it is my advice just be the part of bachche avengers batch because here in this batch we'll finish our syllabus quickly from 11th to 12th from basic to advanced level we are going to teach you will get the mock test you will get the revision that personal connect will be there the teacher is going to ask you where were you yesterday why are you not answering the questions right right so be the part of this batch on 25th of may we will be starting the classes and that is very important okay so just click on the batch link avenger coupon code is applied you will get the discount and i think now the price is something around 9000 you have to check it right the price is something around 9000 okay even the price is not very high so if you just want to enroll in our batch okay the price is this much if you want to take iconic or plus subscription the plus price is different again for that also you can use the coupon code avengers okay so i was thinking to finish the cell wall also so are you guys okay can you focus for can you focus for some more minutes ha huh? okay uh let it be we'll do it we'll discuss it tomorrow don't worry about that uh tomorrow is saturday na till sunday we'll finish this chapter and then we will start the bio molecules or the cell division okay we'll start the another chapter okay we'll start the another chapter dan bachche so today uh, because uh, after half an hour even hsp sir's class is there he is going to teach you the chemistry so there should be a gap in between so that is why i am ending the class now so in next class we will be talking about the cell wall and endomembrane system and we need one more class and then we will finish the entire chapter so we need two more classes to finish it see it is the it doesn't matter that whether i'm finishing it in two lectures or in three lectures at this point of time what is important you should understand the topic the quality content should be delivered okay the quality content should be delivered so that is why i am telling you that please please be serious be consistent from the day one okay do not watch that videos how to crack the need in this much months and that months please it's a humble request okay so thank you so much for watching bachche do hit the like button do subscribe and in the comment section you have to mention the homework that what is plasmodesmata okay what is plasmodesmata so thank you